What happens if you replace this with an even bigger turbo on your 4.8? This video is actually a follow-up to our Turbo Titan series, where we compared a 4.8 liter to a big block 454, both equipped with the same eBay GT45 turbo. Now, we know from the results, if you haven't seen those, check it out here, we know from the results that that eBay GT45 turbo was actually a little on the small side. Now, it worked better on the 4.8 than it did on the big block. But the question is, what happens if we put the right turbo on each of the combinations? Because there's so much information, I had to break it down into two videos. So let's get started with a turbo upgrade on the 4.8 liter. Let's check out the test motor, check out the turbo, and get to the results. Our test motor was the same one used in part one of our Turbo Titan. It was a 4.8 liter LR4 equipped with JE forged pistons and Gen 4 rods. Now we also featured a stage two turbo cam from Brian Tooley Racing, a set of 706 heads with a valve spring upgrade and the factory truck and throttle body. Now fuel was supplied for our turbo motor through a set of 80 pound Excel injectors. And all this was controlled by a Holley HP management system. But the highlight of all this was obviously the turbo itself. It was a T6 S475 from Summit Racing. Now that T6 turbo featured a 75 millimeter compressor wheel, an 88 millimeter turbine wheel, and a 1.32 AR on the hot side. The turbo was capable of supporting over a thousand horsepower. Now we had no plans on pushing it that far, but we did want to see what the turbo upgrade was worth in terms of power and back pressure. Now all the boost was supplied through a Procharger air to water intercooler. So enough about the test motor, let's get to the results. Okay, we're back to the test with our 4.8 liter. This time we've got the larger S475 turbo and we got a lot of stuff to get through. So I'm gonna go through this stuff fairly quickly. The power output of our NA 4.8 liter was 409 horsepower, 367 foot pounds of torque. After we added the Summit uh, T6 S475 turbo, run at around six, six and a half pounds. Uh, we see we've got 575 horsepower or so. And so your first question is probably, well, how did that compare to the GT45 turbo when we were running at the same boost level? So if we take a look at that, we see that the two were actually fairly comparable. The S475 made a little bit more power, um, but the two are kind of trading it. The S475 is a little bit better through most of the curve, but it was kind of comparable. Not that you'd see a difference, that, that sort of difference on the street or out on the track, but as we turn up the boost, we start seeing an even bigger and bigger difference. So if we jump up to where we ran the maximum boost pressure on the GT45, which was about 14 pounds. Now remember, this is a commanded 14 pounds from the electronic wastegate controller. Commanded 14 for both of them. So we see a much bigger difference in power. Now, some of this difference, especially out here at the top, if we look out here, the difference out here, this is a little more than 50 horsepower. And part of that is because there's a difference in boost there. Even with the electronic controller, we had a falling boost pressure curve on the GT45, which we didn't have on the S475 turbo. And the reason for that is that even though we had an electronic controller with reference lines to both the top and bottom of the gate, we only had a seven pound spring in it. So the excessive back pressure on the GT45, even with the electronic controller, was opening the gate and causing a falling curve. Now we could probably cure that with a stiffer spring, which I didn't do and maybe I should have, but it doesn't stop us from comparing this, especially if we take a look, when we take a look at the boost pressure curves before 5,000 RPM, we see that the S475 was making more power even there and we'll be able to find out when we take a look at the boost pressure versus back pressure curves, it had a lot less back pressure. And that's the reason, that's, primary, that's the primary reason that we were able to make more power is that S475, it probably has a better compressor wheel and stuff too, and, but it did have a lot less back pressure. So it was already making more power and that would only continue as we went up in RPM because the change in back pressure is going to increase with engine speed. Now with this S475, we also turned the boost up a little bit more because it was working so well. 
So we ran it up as high as 16 pounds, where we made 829 horsepower. We know this S475 is gonna support maybe a thousand horsepower, especially on this 4.8 liter, because it has so little back pressure. But speaking of back pressure, let's take a look at those curves now. Okay, now that we've taken a look at the horsepower differences between the two, we can take a look at the boost pressure curves, starting with the back pressure supplied by, this is the Summit Racing S475 T6. At a low boost level, let's take a look at a comparison between this and that's the GT45 Turbo at the same boost level. We already have a pretty sizable difference even down here below 3500 RPM. It's about two pounds out here at the top. 7.8 and 11.5. So it's getting closer to four PSI difference in back pressure between the two. We didn't see a big difference in power there. If you'll remember, it was a little bit in favor of the S475, but not a ton. Now things get changed dramatically when we go, let's go out to the maximum limit where we ran the GT45 turbo. This is the back pressure on that 14 pound run. That's the back pressure, this purple here versus the green is the difference in back pressure between the S475 and the GT45 run at a commanded boost level of 14 pounds. At that commanded boost level, the GT45 had over 19 pounds of back pressure, but the S475 only had about 14 pounds of back pressure, getting near one to one. That's right. On this test, on this 4.8 with the S475, it only reached a one-to-one -one relationship between boost pressure and back pressure out at the very top. And it actually didn't get there until we turned it up to 16 pounds of boost. And it's also important to note that this 19 pounds of back pressure produced by the GT45 Turbo was actually only at a boost pressure of 12 and a half pounds because it had a falling boost pressure. Now we're gonna take a look at that so I can show you that and illustrate it. So we're gonna start over here. We're going to go to our boost pressure and back pressure. Get rid of oil pressure. So that is our boost pressure versus back pressure with the Summit Turbo, the, the S475. And as you can see, we got a nice flat boost curve at the top, that's the top line. And the rising curve we see down here around seven all the way up to uh, about 14 pounds. And as you can see, even at the very top, run at this boost level, the S475 Turbo never had as much back pressure as it has boost pressure. It always had less back pressure than boost pressure. Now, if we compare that to the GT45, run at the same commanded boost pressure, the red. So here at the beginning from 35 out to 45, it was able to control the boost then, down in here, our boost pressure started falling on the GT45 down to 12 and a half pounds out here at 6,500. But that's where the back pressure was 19.1 PSI. So even at the same boost pressure, actually a lower boost pressure, the GT45 had much more back pressure. And if we take a look, if we add the big, we ran it up to 16 pounds of boost, even at 16 pounds of boost, uh, the two red lines, the Summit Turbo had only reached a one-to-one -one boost pressure versus back pressure out at 6,500. Everywhere else, it had a nice flat boost curve, had a rising back pressure curve, but never reached the only equal the boost pressure out at the very top. So this is very important, and this is why we saw, we can take a look at these power numbers again. This is why we saw the power output difference between the Summit Turbo and the GT45. Some of that out at the top definitely was from the drop in boost pressure, but all of this area in here, right here, I mean, we're seeing a difference of 45 foot pounds, even where the boost pressure was the same. That's all a function of back pressure. Now, I wanna know, you guys make some comments, let me know, what do you think? Is it also because of a difference in compressor? I mean, I know that that GT45 will support a lot more power because we've made 800, especially on this small displacement 4.8, it will definitely get up there if we were able to turn everything up. 
So I think that there's more compressor there. I think that this is mostly back pressure, and I think that that's what you'll find. If you size the turbo correctly, reduce the back pressure, you'll make more power. Okay guys, what did we learn? Well, before we get to that, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so I can keep doing these videos. But at the risk of being Captain Obvious, we learned this. A bigger turbo helps make more power. But beyond that, I love these back-to-back -back tests where we show a dramatic change in back pressure going from that GT45 to the bigger T6 S475 turbo. And that brings me to my next question. What do you guys think about that? Is that T6 too big for the little 4.8? I mean, it had less back pressure than boost pressure. And the GT45 had way more back pressure than boost pressure. Is there an intermediate level in there that we should look for for this 4.8? What have you guys run? What's run successful? I mean, we're running it on an engine dyno. We don't know how well this thing works on the street. Is it gonna be too laggy? Is it gonna be too soft? I mean, is that GT45 a better combination for the street? In my opinion, that GT45 works real well for low power levels, say five or 600 at the tire. But if you wanna make eight or 900 at the tire, you're gonna to need to step up to a big turbo. That brings me to my final point, a little nitpicky for the guys at Summit Racing. This T6 turbo, I'd like to see it in a T4. And if you already do that, I'd also like to make one more request. Make that exhaust flange smaller. This is gonna stop fitment in a lot of applications because that thing is giant. Now it's a good turbo and it's sized right for a lot of applications, but that's gonna stop people from using it because it's not gonna fit. I'm Richard Holder, thanks for watching. See you next time.